Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Win 2, which is a tiny device that looks like a cross between a laptop computer and a handheld gaming device, and it's kind of both. It's going to sell for about $699 when it's released later this year. This is a prototype that was sent to me by the folks at GPD for the purposes of testing, as it's in a crowdfunding campaign, and you can pre-order one for about $649. This is a prototype, and so some of the, uh, the things that we're looking at here might be a little different by the time it's released. For example, there's a little bit of light bleed through from some of the sides of the screen. Uh, not super noticeable, but I did want to point it out in case it's something that you noticed in the video. Uh, hopefully that's something that's resolved by the time this is released. But overall, the GPD Win 2 does seem like a nice upgrade over the uh, original, which I uh, tested out in 2016. It has a nicer keyboard, a nice design, and a much faster processor, more memory, more storage, and uh, a bunch of other improvements. Now, here on the back of the device, not only do you have uh, extended gaming buttons in addition to what's on the front, we've got three on the left and three on the right, um, but we've also got all the ports that you would need to connect external devices, and that's kind of what I wanted to focus on here. So I'll show you a little bit of how you can use this as a handheld gaming PC or use it for general purpose computing, um, because while it is positioned as a gaming device, it's something that can really be used for just about anything that you can use a PC for. And then I'm also gonna plug in some external devices and show you how it works like a desktop computer if you really wanted to. So let's uh, first take a look at a little bit of gaming because that is, of course, what I think most people are gonna be doing with this sort of uh, system. Um, so we've got a little bit of Rayman here. That's enough of that. So you can do uh, basic gaming stuff, but you can also get a lot more done with this if you really wanted to. Uh, not what I meant to do. Uh, for instance, let's go ahead and minimize that because we're getting ahead of ourselves. You can go ahead and load up a web browser and you can use the keyboard to enter text, open up websites and so forth. You can uh, use the Windows Store and download Windows Store apps like Netflix and it supports video playback pretty nicely in that. And you could even do multitasking. You could do Netflix on one side and watch video while you're surfing the web. Now, since I don't have the uh, rights to show you that, I'll just go ahead and open up YouTube. And we can do a video that I do have the rights to. So we've got video playback, we've got web browsing, what else might you want to do? How about a little bit of document editing? There we go. So we can open a word processor, set this down, and start typing. Now, it's a little too small of a keyboard for serious touch typing. It's more sort of laid out for thumb typing. But there are a couple of things that help make it a little bit easier. First of all, it's a little bit wider and a little bit better spaced, I think, than the original uh, GPD keyboard. And there's also sort of some raised keys here. Now, these are really raised, I think, to make it easier for gamers. So in addition to being yellow, the W, A, S, and D uh, keys, which are often used for direction, have little sort of raised bumps on them. There's also little bits of uh, bumps on the F and G so that you can position your hands. Uh, it's more like a two, four, maybe even six finger typing experience than all 10, but you can do some typing. And in addition to word processing, you could use that for things like running the Windows subsystem for Linux on this computer. So some people have asked me already if I could install some programming software. I'm not really much of a programmer or at all of a, of a programmer, but I do like to play with uh, Linux. And you can see here that we've got uh, Linux 1604.3 LTS running on here. 
Um, it supports apt-get, it supports uh, all your basic bash commands. This command line uh, version of Ubuntu uh, also supports OpenSUSE. This is something that Windows, that Microsoft built into Windows 10 and works with most versions, and it allows you to do things like SSH and other sort of developer-friendly uh, uh, activities. And if you really wanted to, you could do things like open a text editor and type. try to remember how to exit. Uh, you can mount the Windows file system and explore it using this instead of uh, PowerShell. And if you really wanted to, you could do something silly like opening the Lynx text-based web browser. And we could go to newyorktimes.com and surf the web using text only. Now, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do that. So you've got uh, the ability to run Ubuntu without even exiting uh, Windows. Uh, I am at some point in the future hopefully going to take some time and actually install uh, Ubuntu so we get a better look at what the operating system looks like, but I wanted to show you a little bit of that. Um, so it works for gaming, it works for Word uh, documents, it works for um, all sorts of various general purpose computing, and that's why it's a little bit more expensive than you might expect from just a handheld gaming device or from uh, really a laptop with these specifications because it is more versatile, even though it's not gonna be something that you necessarily are gonna get a lot of work on, done on when you're using it in this fashion. But if you start plugging in accessories like an external display and keyboard and mouse and a power cable, then you do have the option of running everything on a larger display. And that gives you the capability of getting a little bit more done, I think, if you have the extra screen space and uh, ability to type a little faster. Um, this is a 720p display. It's mirrored as, uh, as if it were the same screen on both, but if you wanted to, you could go into the display settings and do extended instead of mirrored. And that allows you to use up a little bit more space here. So now we've got sort of multi-window and then I could go back over here and say, watch a video on the small screen while getting some work done on the big screen. Um, so it's something you could use for gaming on the go, but if you wanted to, you could then plug it in and view presentations, watch videos, uh, send your games to a larger display, um, generally use it to do just about anything that you would do with a computer. It's got a fairly noisy fan. It's got a relatively low power processor for a desktop computer, so I wouldn't necessarily expect to use it for my only computing device, but as a gaming device, that is also something that you can fold up, put in your pocket if you have a really large pocket, or definitely in your bag, it weighs about a pound, it's a portable device, and it does all sorts of things that you would expect a computer to do. Um, don't save, because there's nothing exciting going on there. Let's go back into the display settings one more time. And duplicate again. And I'll show you the last thing, which I said I was getting ahead of myself with earlier. Let's go ahead and close Rayman. And bring up a little StarCraft. And this is just to show you that you can play relatively uh, high power games even on this. It's not necessarily going to be designed for bleeding edge uh, performance on the latest games, but a game like StarCraft II actually works reasonably well here. And this is a game that I think makes sense to run on a larger display because you now have access to using this, this uh, mouse instead of the built-in controls. Uh, there is a mouse mode that you can use. You just sort of flip this switch and now I can 
move the cursor. But you see how slow that is. It's not something that you would necessarily want for a real-time strategy game like this. I don't know why we're having trouble connecting, but this is going to throw my video for a loop. Let's give it one more quick try here. So there you go, StarCraft. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.